The Orlando shooting is the latest in a long line of terrorist attacks in which online propaganda is suspected to have played a role in radicalization. Joining us now, senior advisor to the Counterterrorism Project and computer science professor at Dartmouth College, Dr. Hani Farid. He's developed new technology that would help internet companies detect and instantly terrorist content from their sites. Doctor, great to have you with us this morning. So many layers to talk through. This is so fascinating. But let's start at the top with what it is. It's an algorithm that's been used in the past to detect child pornography, for example. Now you say it can be used to detect terrorism. That's right. So we've developed technology um, over the last year that allows uh, social media companies and technology companies to find and remove terrorist related content and this t same technology has been used in the past to remove child pornography from sites and it's a very effective technology it works fully automatically it's efficient it's accurate and it allows uh, technology companies to effectively uh, enforce what is already in place which is their terms of service that this content is not allowed on the network and we are simply um, creating for them a mechanism to enforce that in an automatic, efficient, and accurate way. And as you point out, this is something they're doing already in a manual way, as you called it a whack-a-mole game, of waiting for somebody to report either child pornography in that right. case or terrorist content in another. That's exactly right. Yeah, so we're just saying you don't have to do that manually because the problem with doing it manually is a, a post comes up, um, it stays online for a while, somebody reports it, it comes down, it pops up over here. And we are saying once you've removed it, you now have technology to never allow it so back on the network. What's, uh, the, what's, the, what's the pushback then? Well, you have to ask them that. I don't know. I don't actually understand what the pushback is, to be honest with you. How, do, how does it work and how does it define? How, what, what's the definition? Yeah, that's the right question to ask. Um, so the way the technology works is every image, every video, every audio has a distinct signature that we can extract from it. It's a lot like human DNA. As you age, as you grow older, as you change your clothes, as you get your hair cut, you have a distinct signature, which is your DNA. As it turns out, digital media has that similar type of dis uh, distinct digital signature that we can extract out so that when an image comes in, we have flagged it as child pornography, extremism, violent calls to violence. Extract the signature. And then we simply scan everything that comes in and compares it against that signature. And when we get a hit, that, that content is not allowed online. And the White House, Lisa Monaco, I know, came out and said that she supported this technology. It's free. Do you see the White House being involved in maybe trying to push the technology companies to use this? I think the role of the government here would be terrific as a broker, um, is to bring, broker, as an honest broker, to bring in the academics, the NGOs, and the technology companies together and to create a sense of urgency on this problem. So I can see them as being a very important partner in this. Um, but at the end of the day, the technology companies have to decide we no longer want this content on our network. It is harmful for the network, it is harmful for society, and it's harmful for the world, and we should eliminate it. You will hear slippery slope arguments um, that if we do this, we will eventually ban videos of kittens. Which they made over child porn, which is sort of stunning. It is true that when we were deploying the child pornography technology, we heard e this, exactly the same concerns, um, which I found indefensible. We are not talking about stifling speech. We are not talking about stifling um, uh, dissent. We are talking about taking off videos that show violent beheadings, that show calls to violence. These are extreme, as we call them, the worst of the worst. We absolutely should have dissent on the internet. We should absolutely have discussions on the internet. But there is no place in my mind of uh, pictures and videos of young children being sexually assaulted and of people having their heads chopped off. I think that's where we reasonably can draw the line. And actually, face Facebook organized a, a meeting, a, a private meeting, to talk about your idea back in April. And if you listen to the reports, everyone was skeptical of the idea. They all questioned your idea. What are we missing here? Um, I don't know, but here's what I do know. Uh, when we were talking about this eight years ago in the child pornography space, we heard exactly the same concerns, that there was skepticism. Uh, we don't know how to define it. Um, it, won't be, it won't work efficiently. It'll get in, 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 the, in the way of our, of our business model. Um, we've, we have now deployed uh, what's called photo DNA that fills child pornography worldwide. It has been running live for six years. As far as I can tell, the internet is fine. Uh, Facebook is fine, Twitter is fine, <laughs> YouTube is fine. Everything works just fine. So I don't really buy the argument. That's not to say that we shouldn't have serious conversations about what does and what does not constitute extremist speech. We do have to have a serious conversation about that, and we have to have all the players at the table to have that conversation. But once we decide, and we are not telling Facebook what to take down, we are simply saying you should be aware that this content is your network,
and you as an organization have the right to decide what violates and what does not violate terms of service. That's a fascinating idea. Mm. Let's hope it starts yeah. moving in your direction. Dr. Hani Fareed, thanks for being